Uh, so the last talk we have before break uh, is uh, Professor Haim Sampolinski, so I have the honor of introducing Haim, uh, William Skirbel, Professor of Neuroscience in Hebrew University. Is that right? I forgot the name of your, the, ch the chair that you hold in Hebrew University. Anyway, thank you for coming very much. Thank you. Okay, thank you for inviting me. Um, I'm going to uh, talk about uh, ideas and results, how to uh, measure object representations in and deep uh, artificial and neural architectures. Um, so um, the, the challenge that I'm going to discuss uh, is uh, how to understand the properties that emerge uh, from deep learning and particularly the presentational uh, properties. Uh, how can we devise or uh, methods that uh, can uh, compare uh, properties of representations uh, across different layers, different architectures, uh, artificial and natural brains, etc. So this has been addressed uh, recently by several works. Uh, some of the current methods are either using single neuron from the brain and uh, compare it with some artificial neuron or collection of neurons uh, in the artificial networks. Uh, so single neuron properties comparison. Uh, a very popular uh, method was similarity matrices. Uh, and what I'm going to uh, uh, propose is a complementary method, uh, which is a measure uh, of capacity and geometry, which is driven by, by the theory or by relevant uh, ensemble of tasks. And I, I, I hope to uh, show you some applications to both AI and neural data on object representations. So the general uh, theme uh, that uh, I'm, I'm going to, uh, uh, to uh, discuss is the idea uh, by Jim DiCarlo and David Cox and others uh, that part of, the, part of the goal of the sensory system is to untangle perceptual manifolds, so to uh, cope or to take care of the enormous variability uh, of each uh, concept or uh, an object or face, identity, and so on and so forth. Uh, so the idea is that uh, uh, those, uh, those, uh, uh, I'm sorry, uh, I meant this one. Uh, okay, that's fine. So the idea is that uh, those uh, manifolds correspond to a given uh, object or given face uh, can be uh, tangled uh, in, in this way. So that's uh, maybe the low-level low representation, very hard to decode. Uh, they can be uh, progressively more uh, nicely separated. Uh, so that they can be later on uh, uh, read out uh, very simply from uh, downstream uh, systems. Uh, so, um, uh, so this is the hypothesis that perceptual manifolds are reformatted along the sensory hierarchy such that object identity information can be decoded by a simple li downstream linear readout. So the, the focus here is about object identity information uh, and all the other, uh, for, from that perspective, all the other uh, 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 all the other information about pose or location, uh, scale, and so on are, are basically noise that the system has to, uh, to some degree, get, get rid of. So, so that's the idea, but the question is how to quantify manifold entanglement. How, how entangled manifold has to be, uh, or how unentangled has to be in order to enable invariant categorization. Now, the extreme limit, of course, is if the system uh, uh, reformats uh, the, the uh, manifold into a single point per object or per face and, and so on and so forth, then, then, uh, then the story is over. But uh, we know from both deep networks uh, and also from, uh, from experiments in the visual system and other systems that even high level, high stages, uh, uh, top stages of, uh, uh, of the sensory system is not completely invariant. Uh, so how it enables invariant uh, categorization downstream. So what are the relevant geometry uh, of those manifolds, uh, how to use them to compare across different systems. Um, so what do I mean by manifold? Uh, so uh, for, for, for the purpose of this work, manifold is a very uh, general uh, notion. Uh, it's a collection uh, uh, of, uh, of points in n dimension, uh, compact bounded set. Uh, the ambient dimension is high, is n, uh, but the, the set itself, uh, the manifold, is, is, span, is, uh, is spanned uh, by, or spanning a linear subspace, uh, which is much lower, which is d. Uh, so 
Uh, this can be smooth, can be non-smooth, can be even a set of points. Uh, and, and so that's quite, quite general. Uh, it's, it's kind of, uh, the idea is that th those data that is organized in manifolds have some, some sort of correlations that uh, enable uh, them to be, uh, to be well separated in principle. So this will be object manifold, the cat, a dog, and so on and so forth. Um, so um, uh, now, now, so what is the idea of tangled manifold? So there are uh, many pictures, but, but uh, very few definitions. So let me just go through three possibilities. So one possibility is that two manifolds uh, will be, uh, will be uh, uh, overlapping each other. Well, if they are overlapping, then, uh, then there is ambiguity, so no reformatic can disentangle them. Uh, so that's, that's a possibility. The, the other one uh, is what is uh, suggested by this picture is that they are in principle separable, they are linear, non-linearly separable, but not by a simple linear separator. Uh, and then uh, finally, the, there is this option, uh, which is that each uh, pair of manifolds are linearly separable, but if you compare an ensemble of manifolds, uh, then, uh, for instance, like here, that uh, the red should be classified as plus and the, and the blue as, as minus, uh, then they are not. So it's a, it's a, it's a property of an ensemble of manifold, uh, whether they are linearly classifiable or not. Uh, so the question is, uh, which one is the relevant one? Which one of those options? So uh, I won't go into details, but uh, uh, yeah, I, I can also, also mention that if it is an ensemble property, then it really depends on the labels, right? Because in, on some label, under some labeling, this cannot, will not be linearly separable, the set of manifolds, and other labeling, uh, this will be uh, uh, li uh, linearly separable. Okay, so the, then the question is, uh, which one is the relevant one? So it depends, of course, on the data uh, and so on, but uh, we, we looked at uh, ImageNet data, and we asked ourselves, what happens if you take as manifold simply the point cloud, the thousand or so points, corresponding to a, given, uh, to a given category, and you look at, uh, at those and, and ask, are they entangled in the pixel layer? Uh, and, and the answer that we find is that very few uh, cases uh, have really overlapping and ambiguous, but in most cases, they are not. So option one is, is not the relevant one, at least not for the, for the point cloud uh, of the ImageNet data set. It turns out surprisingly that also option two is not. So if you take the, the data and you try to separate a pair of them, as far as we can see, most of the pairs of those uh, point cloud manifolds are linearly separable, even in the pixel layer. So that's, that, that's picture, at, at, I'm sorry, I'm only, that, hmm. yeah. So that picture uh, is, is, is not the right picture, at least for, for the data that I am, uh, that I am considering. So uh, we, we then uh, therefore think that the relevant uh, manifold is, is uh, the, the relevant problems of tangled manifold uh, is really the problem of ensemble of manifolds. So if you have uh, many manifolds and you want to separate the, some of them uh, to classify them or separate one from the rest and so on and so forth, uh, then uh, this, is going, this is going to be need reformatting. So this is something that you cannot do at the low level stages like pixel layer, but you might be able to do better uh, at, uh, at, at, at top layers. Uh, and, and now it, it, it turns out that under very, uh, the relevant, uh, uh, relative, uh, relatively um, general uh, uh, assumptions, statistical assumptions about those manifold, there is a sharp transition uh, between uh, the region where manifolds are linearly separable and the region where they are not linearly separable. So here theory helps us to uh, uh, make uh, more or less sharp uh, claims about uh, how the geometry of the manifolds, for instance, depend when they are, uh, if they are linearly separable or not. So here's just the highlight of type of uh, theory that's uh, the statistical mechanic theory. So what I'm defining is capacity. And the capacity is the m maximum number of manifolds that with high probability can be linearly classified if you randomly label them by random lab uh, binary labels. Uh, so that, uh, uh, the, under those conditions that I hinted uh, about, uh, it's, it's an extensive or in the sense that the number of uh, separable manifold scales linearly with the dimension n. 
which is, which is good, which just means that we don't have to look at the entire uh, uh, size, the entire layer, or whatever layer we look at, but we can just sample a part of it uh, and measure efficiently the capacity. So the capacity will be the ratio, the num maximum number of separable manifold uh, per neuron in a given population. So I would like to think about this capacity as object information, object accessible information, uh, how, much, uh, how, how, uh, how much information that can be linearly accessible about object identity we have per neuron, we have at a given layer, at a given network, and, and so on and so forth. Okay, so um, let, me, let me skip this. So um, how, how about geometry? So um, the, the, the same theory suggests that uh, although manifolds are, may come in complicated geometry, but there are essentially two parameters that uh, capture uh, their, uh, uh, the, the, the underlying capacity. One of them is the ra manifold radius, and other one is the manifold dimension. Uh, now, of course, those uh, parameters, uh, the radia and dimensions, are not uh, the naive radius and dimension that you might think uh, of, but they are actually uh, capturing the, the subtle uh, geometry of the manifolds or, or, the, or the convex holes. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, once you have an algorithm to compute those radii in dimension, then basically you can forget about the, the manifold and think about them as balls. So the capacity of the manifolds, uh, the capacity of the manifolds will be uh, the same as the capacity of, of, of balls, and this can be written explicitly, uh, 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 for, for the appropriate radius and dimension. And furthermore, we can uh, say that uh, in general, uh, the region between high capacity and low capacity uh, is uh, determined by the ratio, by the radius times the square root of dimension. So basically we have here a, a, a scaling law which tells us uh, if this is substantially lower than one, this product, then the manifolds are, uh, are unentangled uh, because the, the capacity to separate them is high. Uh, if they are in, on this side, then they are uh, tangled and the capacity to separate them is very low. So that's basically the, the kind of the output of, of, of such theory. Okay, so uh, let, me, let me just uh, show uh, how, how does it work. Okay, so here we have the data, the image net, uh, and now we are thinking about each one of those, uh, uh, of those um, uh, images uh, corresponding to one of the object categories as a, as a manifold, and uh, we are going to look at the different uh, uh, object recognition uh, 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 networks. Uh, so this will be this is the AlexNet, this is VGG16, this is ResNet50, and you can look at ResNet Million and whatever. Uh, and, uh, and but now we have an algorithm that we can just uh, apply to each one of the, each layer and each one of these networks, and 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 compute uh, the the capacity. So the 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 number maximum number of manifolds or objects that can be linearly separable per neuron in each one of those stages. And you see that indeed in in in, in this measure uh, the capacity is very low, close to zero, uh, basically random. Uh, uh, random points uh, at the pixel layer. So, so uh, we can say that at the, at the pixel layer, those uh, point clouds are actually very close to being just randomly intermixed without any meaningful object identity information that can be accessible by linear methods. Uh, but then you see the capacity uh, increases uh, monotonically. Uh, and also you can see that, that these different networks uh, which have uh, also increasingly better performance on the image net uh, uh, task, classification task, it's also reflected in the uh, increasingly better capacity in the way uh, I, I described. It's also interesting that uh, the, 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 the increase is monotonic, but, but the most dramatic increase is the later stages. So the first stages do various things, but the actual increase in capacity is coming also only in the, in the later stages. Uh, what, about, uh, what, what about the geometry? So uh, dimensionality is, uh, is interesting. It's typically not necessarily, uh, not necessarily monotonically decreasing. So some operations like convolution uh, may actually increase the capacity, uh, the, the, dimension, the, the manifold dimension. Uh, 
You, know, you also see, you see the man, manifold dimension is extremely high. It's almost like the number of points that there are uh, in, the, in each one of those uh, manifolds uh, at, uh, at the beginning, but then it dramatically drops uh, by, by um, a big factor, uh, you know, 40 or 50, uh, as, uh, as you go to the last layer. So, uh, so there is enormous uh, flattening of the manifold uh, as you go to the, uh, to the last layers. Uh, radius uh, is monotonically uh, de uh, decreasing, more or less. Uh, it's it's uh, in general, for we can also, uh, th for, for theoretical reasons, uh, uh, justify uh, the, the observation uh, that the, the radius uh, changes uh, uh, basically down to one uh, and not much below that. And so, so there is a modest uh, reduction in the size measured by the radius of the, of the manifold, but the most dramatic effect is, uh, is the uh, flattening of the manifold uh, and reducing the, uh, the dimensionality of the manifold. Okay, so that seems that those measures um, make sense at least. Uh, they, they capture uh, some of the emergent um, manifold uh, properties uh, or, or separation of the manifold uh, as you go to, uh, to, the, to the last layers. Um, we can, uh, we, we have also, um, uh, 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 we also perform similar uh, analysis, but this time on a fine transformed images, which are better controlled and can be densely sampled. So basically we take a set of images and each image we turn into a manifold by, uh, uh, by, uh, by uh, applying uh, a fine transformations and densely sample them. So basically it's like a smooth manifold uh, defined by the fine transformation, it can be translation, rotation, shear, and so on and so forth. Uh, and uh, when we do this, uh, we have similar uh, behavior. So uh, now, now it's not a point cloud, but smooth manifold. Uh, nevertheless, we see uh, similar behavior qualitatively. Uh, we see that the capacity is very low at the pixel layer. Although we, talk, we are only talking here about uh, basically 2D translation. So what you see here, that with 2D translation, the uh, ability to, uh, uh, to separate manifold is very low and then increases uh, monotonically and again mostly in the last layers, uh, overcoming partially uh, the, uh, the translation invariant. So it's not fully translation invariant even in the top layer. Uh, but it's uh, increasing the, it, it reducing the variability using this, uh, these measures. Uh, you can see the same with the dimensionality. Is very, uh, the dimensionality is enormous uh, at the pixel layer, so there is a strong distortion uh, of, the, of the image representation the pixel layer due to translation, uh, but then there is a there is dramatic uh, reduction in dimensionality as you go to the top layers. And similarly for the radius, uh, here the radius is, not, is mostly constant uh, during the intermediate layers, uh, but there is a substantial decrease at the beginning uh, and, 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 uh, and at the end of the, uh, and the top layers of the, of the uh, network. So we have two different types of uh, manifolds, smooth manifolds uh, with affine transformed uh, uh, images or point cloud of the image uh, net data sets uh, which uh, uh, using the same uh, tools or the same measures give us a, a window of how uh, these uh, manifolds are, uh, are reformatted as they are propagated uh, through the network. Okay, so now uh, I don't know how much time I have. Okay, so now I want to, uh, to, uh, to, to, de to demonstrate how we are using these uh, measures uh, to uh, compare artificial uh, data, uh, artificial networks, and, uh, and neural networks. So uh, I, I'll show you two, uh, two ongoing uh, experiments like that. Uh, one is uh, about face uh, representation. Uh, the data is uh, from Doris Zhao and Wiener Freiwald, uh, 2010 paper in Science, uh, where they, um, I think I have here, yeah, so when they discovered uh, the, that in IT cortex there are discrete uh, patches uh, of uh, areas uh, where neuron, neurons are selective to faces, uh, more than just uh, objects, uh, and uh, although there are several patches here, they are lumped together 
into three. Uh, uh, so this will be MLMF, and this will be AL, and this will be AM. So from uh, posterior to anterior. Uh, so there are essentially, I'll call it three stages uh, of, uh, of phase processing. Um, they have, uh, in, in, in their analysis, they, they found that there is, in some sense, a progression uh, from a lower level to intermediate level to high level. Uh, and uh, so we, we are going to ask, do we see a similar uh, interpretation of the neuronal representation when we use the capacity and manifold geometry uh, measures on the neural data? And, and furthermore, can we uh, compare with, uh, with face recognition uh, uh, artificial uh, deep convolutional networks. So that's, uh, that's a data. Uh, you have uh, about 27 uh, different faces and each one some eight, uh, eight pose uh, uh, variables. Uh, and and uh, a monkey was viewing this and about 160 uh, neurons from, from two sites. Uh, of IT of those patches uh, were measured. Um, and uh, here, here's, a, here's a, a summary of uh, one of the comparisons. So if you look at the top here, uh, this is the capacity as we measured it uh, uh, from, the, from the manifold uh, represented by the neural responses uh, for the three uh, patches. Uh, this is here, we measure it in time. But basically, you can look at this as representing the, the full capacity. If we just forget about time and lump everything together to spike count or to find rate, basically the numbers at the peak will be the relevant ones. And uh, here you see the, the, the uh, responses or the manifolds uh, in, uh, uh, in uh, VGG phase, uh, deep convolutional networks that were uh, pre-trained network where we use the same, uh, the same uh, images that the monkey has been viewing uh, and propagated them through the network. And you see here the capacity, of course the pixel layer is the same, will be the same as here, uh, but uh, remarkably and suspiciously uh, 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 I would say there is a very good, uh, uh, there is a very good match between uh, the actual, the, the, the top layers uh, of the VGG phase uh, and the top layer of the, fa the, the top uh, phase patch uh, in IT cortex. Uh, this is not only qualitative, but I would say quantitative is the same number here and here. And also interestingly that if we do the same experiment but using VGG object rather than trained by phase, but tr pre-trained for object like ImageNet, then the, 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 uh, the correspondence is inferior. So, the, so this suggests at least that uh, VGG phase uh, captures some of the salient representation uh, of, uh, of faces, specifically faces, as compared to, uh, to the IT cortex. You can also see that at the same time, the quality of uh, pose estimation uh, decreases. So also in the neural data, the mean square error of pose estimation goes up, and the same with the uh, VGG, there is a large error bus, but again, the numbers uh, at the top are, uh, are similar to the numbers that we get from the, uh, from the uh, IT uh, patches. Okay, so, uh, oops, I'm sorry. Uh, here is the same as dimension and, and radius. Uh, the, 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 the conclusion is the same. And now I'm, sh I'm going to, uh, to the, my last experiment. Now uh, we are talking about object manifolds in, in macaque monkeys. So we are, the monkey is viewing a set of object. uh, objects. Objects are, uh, are, uh, are divided into classes, uh, categories. Each one of them is a lot of variability. Uh, and uh, we are going to do the same, uh, the same. So there is neural data in this case, about 160 neurons, both in V4 and in IT, and we're going to compare those and compare those to, uh, to uh, artificial networks. So this is the way the data looks like. 
uh, the, all the details uh, can be seen. It's published a couple of years ago. Uh, and this, uh, this actually has been analyzed also uh, using similarity metrics comparing uh, the neural similarity metrics to the, uh, to the network similarity metrics, but we are going to use our own measures. So here is the example for the capacity. So what you see here is the, uh, the, again, the same images, the same ensemble of images on the same manifolds propagating through uh, VGG16 for objects uh, as a function of the layers. And what you see here, horizontal lines, are the capacity measured from the neural data for V4 and for IT. And from this, you can basically say that uh, around uh, maybe the second to last, uh, to last uh, max pooling will be corresponding to V4, whereas the, the last max pool or even fully connected after that uh, will correspond to IT. So it's easy to uh, kind of use this to uh, have at least a suggestion of what layer in the network corresponds to V4 or IT and so on. Uh, the same conclusion comes from looking at the geometry. So again, you see that, uh, and, uh, that uh, uh, IT, uh, uh, the uh, geometry in IT correspond roughly to, to the lux, uh, max pooling stage and the same true for, for, uh, for the radius. So um, this, is, uh, this is suggesting uh, that, uh, that, that in, for methodologically we have a uh, we have, uh, I think, interesting tools that we can uh, use for comparing, uh, for first of all, understanding uh, what, uh, what type of representations uh, are emerging uh, or, or and how they evolve uh, through, the, through, through the layers, how they are being entangled in a quantitative way, um, and comparing them to, to neural data. So let me then uh, summarize. Um, that what we find is, among our findings, is that accessible object information, that capacity, number of manifolds that can be separable, linearly separable per neuron, per neuron in a layer, is monotonically incre uh, increasing across layers in deep convolutional networks, and they also seem to increase uh, when we compare lower level to higher level visual areas uh, to the extent that we have the data. Uh, Interestingly, I didn't show uh, quantitative results, but uh, in the case of uh, point cloud uh, image net manifold, uh, we could compare the pixel layer uh, capacity to the capacity of completely shuffled uh, images, uh, and they, they are very close to it. Uh, they're, they're slightly higher, so obviously there is information about uh, objects, uh, categories in the pixel layer, but it's very, uh, it's close to random, which means that uh, with the linear methods, uh, this will be completely uh, useless. Um, top layers have much higher capacity, although they are far from being invariant. Uh, that's true for the neural and also for the artificial uh, data. Uh, I didn't talk about correlation, so I, I focused on the, ge the geometric properties of individual manifolds, but another important set of questions is how the manifolds are aligned with respect to each, to each other, uh, what type of correlations uh, exist, uh, and uh, at least I just mentioned here that the first layers uh, in, in all the deep convolutional networks that we have measured uh, basically reduce correlations between the manifolds, and the last layer are, uh, are working on the dimensionality and the capacity. Um, we also tested the notion that capacity is extensive, uh, we we subsampled uh, layers in artificial uh, uh, networks uh, and, and, and found that, uh, by and large, uh, we can say that the characterizing the layer by, um, uh, by a capacity in the sense of number of separable manifold per neuron uh, is a valid uh, notion. So uh, even, even, uh, even in realistic data, as, as, as this data is, um, uh, there, is a, there is a remarkable similarity between different uh, convolutional networks, uh, at least in a qualitative sense, uh, as I showed here, but there are, different in, there are obvious differences in the type of separability that they achieve uh, eventually at the top layers. Um, yeah, so I, I want to add with some general comments. Uh, uh, first of all, from the perspective of theory or statistical mechanic theory, 
it is, I think, uh, uh, it is uh, a, a, good, uh, uh, a good result uh, or outcome uh, of the fact that uh, the theory, which is uh, uh, kind of abstract, mean field, uh, use all the fancy technique of statistical mechanics, can be applied not only to synthetic data and, uh, and toy models and so on, but also to realistic neural uh, and uh, uh, neural and artificial uh, uh, networks, but using but uh, 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 um, uh, processing uh, realistic, uh, uh, realistic real-world data. I think that's important because that gives hope uh, for theories to, uh, to be more ambitious than we, had, we, we were in the past, where we basically assume binary, random, or Gaussian, some, some simple, uh, simple statistical structures that uh, perhaps we can push theory, not only statistical mechanics, but maybe other types of theories, uh, to apply directly to realistic, uh, to realistic results. I, I would also mention, I didn't show a, a figure here that, that the measured, <coughs> sorry, the measured capacity that I showed here uh, fits nicely to the, to the statistical, mechanical, theoretical prediction. So there is a good match between theory, a quantitative match between theory and, uh, and the computer experiments that I have, uh, uh, that I have shown here. Thank you.